And we are back again for a third time this week. There's just so much news going on that I feel like I should comment on everything. I will say um, it, I upload these videos natively to LinkedIn. However, if you are uh, concerned that you may have missed one or maybe you want to go back and reference a video I have already filmed, these are all saved on the YouTube channel, Financial Genie. So you can go back, you can subscribe to the channel to get alerts when there's a new video. And like I said, revisit anything that I've posted in the last year or two. So on to today. Uh, and if you guys are like me, you've been looking at the social media, we're seeing a lot of references, a lot of personal accounts from individuals in Italy. And I've seen the pleading over and over again, friends and family in the USA pay attention. This is a chance to see your future. Don't underestimate what is going on here. So there's a lot of commentary around the spread of the virus in Italy, how it's spreading, the numbers, uh, the impacts to the healthcare system, the overcrowding of hospitals. Uh, and, and it is an, a unique and interesting opportunity to say, okay, what happened in Italy and could it happen here? From my perspective, I immediately wanna look at the economic impact in Italy and the Italian stock market. So. Did a little bit of research today. Uh, Italy has taken very drastic measures to control or at least contain the virus. And to quote a Bloomberg article that was actually published on March 10th, of course, the more aggressive action they take in trying to contain the virus, the more punishment is inflicted on the economy. And just recently, JP Morgan analysts are expecting a first quarter contraction in Italy of about seven and a half percent. So that's pretty strong. And, and for those of you who don't know, Italy kind of had a shaky economy anyway. So of course their government has uh, been implementing some stimulus packages, much like we hear our government talking about doing. A lot of the things that they included were very similar to what ours have been doing, some loan guarantees for certain industries. They've been addressing the hourly worker. Uh, one of the things they had that I thought was super interesting was a moratorium on mortgage payments um, for small businesses and individuals. And if you think about yourself in your daily life, um, yeah, if you actually had a moratorium on your mortgage payment, that, that would be pretty impactful. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, the next thing I went and looked at was their stock market. And there is actually an Italian national stock exchange and they do have a benchmark that they follow. It has 40 different holdings. And I started to look at, okay, like where was it? How far did it fall and where are we now? Um, so this particular exchange, um, I, trying to like line up the timeline, they say that we are, you know, two weeks behind them. So I was trying to go back to when maybe they first started really experiencing the coronavirus and what has happened since then. That kind of took me back to February 19th. Now, their particular exchange was at $25,750 at that time. It did bottom all the way down to about 14,800 and it has since rebound. Um, but that drop is about a 42% drop. So theoretically speaking, when this all broke out in Italy, their national exchange had about a 42% drop from top to what we hope is bottom, right? We hope this last rebound is a good one. So if we were to apply that to the US and backdate, okay, when did things really start to ramp up here? If we're two weeks past them, if they were mid-February, let's look at early March. You know, the S&P was hovering right around 3,000 at that time. So if we were to apply the same potential drop, uh, drop our S&P by 42%, that would have it dropping all the way down to 1740. Now it is hovering around 2,500. We have a minor rebound today. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna drop to 1740. Um, I'm, I'm not saying it'll even drop again. I just think it's interesting because we get asked the question all the time, how long can this go on and how bad can it get? And if you look at Italy, um, it can get pretty bad. So there's a lot of reasons why you can't just draw a direct line of correlation between the two. Please don't think I'm trying to do that. Again, theirs is only 40 um, holdings, ours is 500, so a little bit more diversified. Also, one would hope and expect that all of the drastic measures we are taking today are to prevent us from getting to where Italy is. Um, I think I listened to a comment the other day that said, you know, basically if this social distancing works, 
then it will sound like a non-event and then basically everybody will complain, right? So we need this to be a non-event. We need this social distancing to work. We just wrapped up a call uh, with our chief investment officer here at SRP, Robert Wagner, and he's fantastic. And I would love to share just some final comments he made that stood out to me. Um, you know, the first was the market is forward looking. And so maybe not to the entire extent of what could happen, but one thing we need to be aware of is the market is already considering lost earnings from the cancellation of the NCAA tournament, travel, that sort of thing. So that was a good reminder, even for me to be like, you know what, the market is forward looking. They know all of these cancellations. They're already baking that in. Um, the second thing he said, kind of unrelated, but I'm super interested in it anyway. Um, there has been this debate about active versus passive funds for a long time. Um, and he was basically saying like, now's the time for active fund managers to either like, he didn't use this phrase, this is my phrase, to either like put up or shut up, right? Because if you're really gonna show your value as an active manager, now's the time to show it. Uh, I think the phrase he used was, you know, now we're gonna see like who really is adding value versus who's just been writing the indices the past 10 years. So anyway, that was a wrap on the market today. I'm such a nerd about these things. I'll try to keep you guys updated as things continue. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend, takes a nice long break, probably at home with your families. We'll talk to you guys soon.